Hello everybody, it's AJ of the Mighty Gluestick. How's it going? How's your year panning out so far? Mine's going pretty good. Right, so today I'm going to talk about the Otug. Now the Otug is a classic D&D monster. Uh, it's been around for a very long time. There's an excellent uh, ecology of the the Otug and the Neo Otug, um, which are also known as Gul Gothra. Gul Gothra. Um, they're also known as the shit piles or shit beasts or refuse beast or garbage creature um, because they essentially love wallowing in filth. That is their chosen habitat. They are an intelligent creature. They've got an intelligence of six. There's also the Neo Otug, which is slightly larger and a little bit more intelligent. Um, but Otug are capable of speech. And much like in one of the most hated uh, Star Wars movies, just because they can speak doesn't mean they're intelligent. In fact, they have telepathy, uh, a limited telepathy. So the Otu can magically transmit simple messages and images to any creature within 120 feet of it that can understand any language or a language. This form of telepathy doesn't allow the receiving. So uh, the creature, you can't telepathically respond to the Otug, it just basically lets its intentions be known, and it does so rarely. They are pretty much content. They're they're a sort of a lazy creature uh, that is really just interested in targets of opportunity and gathering its, its junk. It uh, they migrate to any source of sufficient amounts of nutrients, food, and that is essentially any sort of decaying organic matter. Uh, they are very very resistant to disease. Um, possibly immune to disease and their bite is quite capable of transmitting disease um quite a nasty one such as well like a, a sort of a typhus or something like that now they are there's a few things about the otug which are covered in ancient lore uh but isn't really covered in the monster manual of fifth edition so i'm just going to go over a couple of things about them uh, specifically the way they breed um, and some interesting um, aspects of their biology. They are an aberration, which means they're an otherworldly creature. So they don't conform to uh, terrestrial biology per se, uh, in that they don't have any other orifice apart from their mouth, uh, which means all of their bodily functions are taken care of by that one orifice. Yeah, so you really don't want to get a bite from that thing because you're both being bitten by its mouth and its ass at the same time and they regurgitate uh, any food that they have extracted all the nutrients from so essentially they gout out uh, fecal matter at the same time that they eat it um, and they just basically regurgitate and, and recycle it over and over again until their wallow where they like to hang out covered in refuse is spent and then they go off looking for something else so they're grotesque um, they're a bulbous bulking thing they're large um, they have a neutral alignment because they just don't care pretty much as long as they their basic desires are covered uh, they're fine they breed about once every seven years and all Altuk have got they've got a unique form of reproduction all of them produce uh, essentially a, a a breeding spore of a mass uh, kind of like a it looks like a, a spongy jelly egg sac um, but what it actually is is an unfertilized uh, otug it, it's it's almost like a baby uh, it's, but it's a tissue mass and uh, so what they do is they go and they co they congregate in a specific breeding area um, ancient bone piles and things like that always below the ground and they regurgitate this uh, this mass and then they eat each other's uh, reproductive masses and in doing so, they fertilize it. And any Otug or Neo Otug can fertilize any other um, egg sac. Uh, and then that gestates and they regurgitate a baby Otug, which reaches adult uh, size in about four months or so. And that's, that's the way they do it. Uh, they are quite terrifically strong. Uh, they've got a strength of 16 and they're quite low to the ground and they have these whipping tentacles with barbs on them that allow them to do quite severe damage. Uh, a tentacle attack, um, they make three attacks, one with its bite and two with the tentacles. 
And I would allow you to get quite creative with how they use these tentacles um, and their environment, uh, such as the ability to pull somebody down under all of their gunk to suffocate and cause exhaustion. Uh, because it's it's you could say that being pulled into a, a rotting pile of festering crap um, is going to sap your will to fight. Um, th- that would certainly sap mine. So the bite attack is a plus six to hit, uh, reach of five feet. One target takes twelve points of piercing damage, and if the target is a creature, it must succeed on a DC fifteen Constitution saving throw against disease or become poisoned until the disease is cured. Every 24 hours that elapse, the target must repeat the saving throw, reducing its hit point maximum by 5 points on a failure. So that's its hit point maximum, not its current hit points. Uh, that means that it's a it's a gradual and devastating, wasting disease. Um, and the physical symptoms of that, you, you it's not just points, right? You've got a horrible wasting disease, which is going to cause all sorts of problems for your character not the least of which is um, they're going to be exploding from both ends as all of their outs- insides want to get out of them as quickly as possible. And that is really going to put a damper on your day. Uh, by the p- time that they're they're about half hit points or so, they're barely going to be able to move. Um, and they'll probably be bedridden, uh, feverish. Um, by the time they're at one quarter hit points, they'll probably be delirious um, and so weak that they can barely stand. Uh, and any any part past point past that, and they're going to look like they're going to die, um, and they'll be very very weak. So, the disease is cured on a successful save, and the target dies if the disease reduces its hit point maximum to zero. This reduction of the target's hit point maximum lasts until the disease is cured, and I would say that um, the hit point reduction would be gradually come right after a few days or so of rest and recovery if they've automatically saved against the disease um, just on their own without medical assistance or magical assistance so it's quite a devastating uh, thing i would also really i would throw in some exhaustion levels in there just to to mimic um, those additional effects of a debilitating disease particularly as you're losing quite large chunks of your hit points otherwise it's just fairly unpleasant Um, either way you're probably going to lose your lunch and what you ate last week tentacle attack plus six to hit 10 foot reach Um, now the tentacles actually can reach and grow up to 14 length uh, 14 feet in length fully extended but the otu will be whipping these things around and they'll be hunched down close to the ground to get maximum leverage which doesn't really allow them to to stretch at full extension with their tentacles Uh, So just bear that in mind. But they can actually reach further than 10 feet. Um, They do uh, uh, 7 points of bludgeoning damage on a hit, plus 4 points of piercing damage as these um, uh, flexible jaw-like pads, which uh, are festooned with fangs. In fact, the entire tentacle, although in the picture here it doesn't really show it very well, their entire tentacle is barbed and thorny. Um, it's their their body is a lot less smooth than it's depicted here. It's actually encrusted with all sorts of warts, calluses, barbs, um, and sores and things like that. That's um, they're quite disgusting to look at. They really do blend in very well with the pile of rotting refuse um, because that's exactly what they look and smell like, and they also sound pretty um, sloppy as well. So yeah, uh, the piercing damage if the target is medium or smaller is then grappled. Uh, the escape DC is 13, and it's restrained uh, until the grapple ends. So the Otuk has two t- tentacles, and each can grapple a different target. And I would certainly allow you, um, if it's grappled two targets, to, um, because they are an intelligent and fairly retiring creature that doesn't chase anyone down, they basically concentrate on defense, it will use a grappled opponent uh, to defend itself. So it will use them like a shield. So I would, I would take their natural arm class of 14. I would bump it up a couple of points if they've got somebody in, in the way. And if your character rolls uh, a clear miss, like a 1 on a d20, um, it's got a very good chance of hitting the person that they're using as a shield instead of the Otug, uh doing full damage to them because the Otug has expertly put one target in the way of another. 
Um, but that would only be on a, a very critical miss um, roll. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't want to overuse that too much. Hit points are whopping 114. Uh, their speed is 30 feet. If they do actually get up and clomp around, um, they have a fairly odd um, gait because they only have three limbs. Um, but they're fairly agile. Um, and can move around on those three limbs quite well, particularly because they have barbed tentacles, which they can also use to ambulate and grab onto things and swing around stuff um, like an anchor rope, um, much like Batman did on one of his movies. So yeah, the tentacle slam, uh, it grabs a creature that it's grappled uh, and it slams them onto a solid surface. The creature must succeed on a DC 14 strength saving throw or take 10 points of bludgeoning damage and be stunned until the end of the Otyug's next turn. On a successful save, the target takes half bludgeoning damage and isn't stunned. If you want to be mean, you could say that this, um, the saving throw is constitution based and it's solely to stop being stunned, but you would essentially take full damage from that Otyug slamming you. I mean, why not? Characters can use Witch Bolt, which does lots of damage every round without having to roll. So why not? It's a creature which you can use one odd you against a group, in which case I would definitely bump up some of its abilities, as I've just mentioned, um, or groups of odd yukes, perhaps even some uh, young odd yukes, which are uh, gathered together because they're migrating from one refuse pile to another. Of course, being an intelligent, fairly retiring and neutral creature, they are in dwellers in darkness that uh, they prefer not to be in the light, um, simply because it blinds them and disorientates them, and it's not really conducive to a rotting pile of refuse because it attracts all sorts of flies and other things. Um, they prefer to uh, be in a pit or uh, something like that. Um, so a natural place for them to be would be uh, at the base of a cliff or something where large creatures fall down and rot. That would be a nice spot for a not you. Um, so other creatures can use Ocukes um, in their dungeons. So you'd put them in a pit or something like that and uh, basically throw your waste down onto them and they become a living guardian of your space. Um, so if somebody displeases you greatly, you could throw an Otyug, uh, throw them into the Otyug pit, much like Jabba the Hutt threw Luke down into the pit with the Rancor. Um, similar sort of thing, just not quite so ginormous. And uh, Otyugs, of course, are animals. Um, and they're otherworldly animals, but they will take any uh, target of opportunity. But they will, if they, if possible, and things are looking grim, they will try and retreat. They won't fight to the death if they can actually get away, uh, because they're really just interested in dead things, only eating targets, living targets of opportunity, or if they're starving. Uh, yeah, so subtraining beings use them. And uh, also, there's in the article that uh, Ed Greenwood wrote in Dragon Magazine, um, he was talking about a, a lord of a kingdom who was using an Otyug to dispose of enemies of the state. And he did so by having a balcony um, outside of his private uh, dining room uh, that was just over top of the midden pit that was used by the kitchen and staff. And inside that was a well-secured uh, Otyug pit that he threw enemies of the state down into disappearing without trace so that is the otug for you um, i definitely recommend use variants of the otug i mean there are otherworldly creatures so you can go pretty nuts with their biology and strange habits uh, their physiology is really cool um, they have you know the two tentacles with the the sort of claw mouth things and then you've got the single two foot long tentacle that comes right up out of the sort of middle of this thing's back uh, and it's got these this line of three eyes on it um, that look around seemingly with perfect depth perception and um, they swivel that eye stalk all the time uh, when they're looking around and which makes it very hard to sneak up on them they're really they're not designed to sort of swivel around all the time although they are quite agile when they get moving they are dug into the burrow most of the time and much like the garbage creature from star wars uh, a new hope they just extend that eye stalk up and look around if they're immersed in this wallow um, and I would assume they breathe like that somehow because they seem to be in the wallows most of the time. So I don't know how they breathe or what they breathe, um, but they seem to get by okay. Other than that, yeah, the mouth on these things, originally it was much more sucker-like, like a lamprey mouth, 
uh, but in later depictions it was much more like a jaw like it was a giant hinged jaw uh, but yeah you can go nuts with that too and, and describe it however you like and perhaps even have something like a uh, prehensile tongue which will come out and, and grab somebody who's quite close uh, much like the almighty Salak. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. I'll be back with another video very shortly.